Today, the sun has risen. Tomorrow, the sun will rise. The sun rises every day. The sun sets every day. You're never guaranteed a lot in life. I'm guaranteed I gotta pay taxes. I'm guaranteed I gotta die. But I'm guaranteeing that the sun is gonna rise every day as long as I'm alive. And as long as that happens, I could use solar panels like these to produce free energy from the sun. I can collect energy from the sun, store it, and use it on my travel trailer to power it off grid, boondocking, doomsday, whatever you call it. Here on the Ponderosa today, I'm gonna to show you what uh, the intro here of what I have, what I'm starting with, some key fun facts on solar that I've learned, because I'm not an expert, but I did stay in a Holiday Inn last night. I can show you what I've learned and what I'm planning to do on my Coachman Catalina legacy here. This is my 2020 Coachman Catalina, 34 foot. I do have the porch on the side with the sliding glass doors. But January, we were coming up to a vacation, got some days off. We're going to go out and vacation and travel in this thing. And when I do, I want to make sure that, you know, you never, you never know when you're going to have shore power. You never know when you're going to have something to plug into. For those who are up north boondocking or anywhere boondocking, you know, in Florida it gets a little hot. But if you want to boondock and be totally off grid, this is the way to do it. I'm gonna show you some stuff here. And in the future videos, you're gonna see a lot more on the Ponderosa. Okay, so a little education. Um, mostly every travel trailer has what they call coach batteries or house batteries. Up here on the tongue, this is a bumper pull, okay? Up here on the tongue, we have, uh, right now what you're looking at is two deep cycle RV batteries. Now this one came with the trailer. There's just one, I got the lid over there. Wired in so that you can run all the 12 volt appliances, the slide out, all right? Slide out there, the awning, LED lights inside. Uh, anything that's 12 volt, you can run on one battery, but that wasn't good enough for me. I wanted two. So I added an equivalent you know, 100 amp hour deep cycle RV battery, and I ran them with battery cables in parallel. Parallel is when you take two, you know, for instance, two 12 volt sources, you run positive to positive and negative to negative. And in return, when you, you know, go to the, uh, pos uh, the uh, parallel route, you're taking the 100 amp hour, the 100 amp hour, at 12 volts and you're doubling the capacity between the two. So if I would have ran these in series, which would be po this positive goes to the trailer, then you'd have this negative going to this positive and then this negative goes to the trailer. That's not what you want to do if you have a 12 volt system because you're going to cause a lot of damage. So I ran them in parallel and that's a basic electronic theory. Uh, series, you double your voltage, keep the amperage or current the same and you double, you run them in parallel, you double the current or amperage and keep the voltage the same. So this is a 12 volt setup. So now I have two 100 amp hour batteries. And the reason you wanna keep of the same kind is because if you had a 100 amp hour and a 60 amp hour, it's, it's, that's gonna be the first one to go. You know, the, your, your lower battery is gonna equalize in voltage or try to, but when you start draining, you know, 50, deep cycle batteries, you don't wanna get below 50% max. You know, if you drain them 50% of their capacity, it's not really good if you go past 50%, okay? So 50% of 100 amp hours is 50. 50% 50 of 60 amp hours would be 30. You know, that's gonna be the first to, to go bad and, and, and sulfate inside or solidify, whatever you call it. So they're both 100 amp hours. So right there at that point, I could run my slide out, my awning, my blue LED lights, my stereo. Um, my fridge would run on propane or 110, so we'll assume that's on propane. Hot water's on propane. Um, all the LED lights in the house are going to be 12 volt, and they don't draw much as LEDs, so I can run mostly everything here on 12 volt. Um, not the electric fireplace furnace, not the TV, not the air conditioners. Okay, so now we're getting bigger here. So. Here's my two 40, you know, 40, can, 40 uh, pound bottles for gas for the hot water heater in the stove and oven and the furnace. Okay, so that's the first thing. So right there, I put an extra battery on my coach or 
house batteries. Now we're going to move on now. So now I have a battery plant here. I'm going to explain to you why you see six of the same batteries and two oddballs, okay? But here is the answer or the definition of running off-grid and solar. You are not running everything on solar. The solar is exclusively there to charge the batteries. The batteries run your inverter, okay? So what's gonna happen is, I'm going to have a battery plant at 24 volts, and that's going to be connected to an inverter, which is gonna take 12 or 24 volts and turn it into 110 to power the trailer. So here is, this is my main hookup here. This is what you call, if you're new to RVs, you call this shore power. Let's say you're, you know, S-H-O-R-E, shore. Let's say you are going to a vacation, RV park. Shore power is what they charge you to plug in. Now this cable comes with my RV and I am riding off of the uh, meter box out there with a breaker and wire to power this. So here's my receptacle here. Now this is a Believe it or not, this is a 30 amp circuit, okay? That trailer with dual ACs takes a 50 amp circuit. 50 because it has two air conditioners. So the neighbor has two air conditioners as well. So that takes a 50 amp circuit to power everything at one time. Now you can, now, so what this red thing is, it's called a dog bone adapter. That's going 50 amp to 30 amp. So it's 30 amp coming out of here, 30 amp possible. And then it changes it from like uh, four pin to three pin for a 50 amp plug. So what's happening is total energy that's possible from this plug is 30 amps, okay? That means I can only run one AC at a time, plus all my other front, you know, appliances. Now I can tell you right now, and maybe if you're a professional RVer, you're gonna tell me I'm wrong. I can run both my ACs at one time. They both get ice cold. Now that may be not be good for it, but when you calculate the startup amperage and whatever I run, I'm but with both of those ACs starting up is is a total of 28 amps. So if I start both of them at the same time, it's 28. Then you got like two amps for the you know 12 volt charger and the LED lights and all that and the, the TV. So one stays on like 80 and the other one I turn on, you know, when the other one's off and then if it kicks on, no problem. But so this is shore power. So what I'm going to do, my goal is to have a battery plant that will have uh, roughly 400 to 800, 400, 600 in the beginning of amp hours of current reserve capacity to power an inverter from 24 volt to 110 volt at 30 amp to plug into here. At that point, okay, shore power is gonna be like it's not shore power. Now the, the problem you run into is this. When you look at this battery plant, here's what I'm gonna do for you, you know, you electronics guys, ham radio guys and stuff, okay? So to start, I have two oddballs here. Now these are AGM batteries and the other six are lead acid. So I spent a total on here about $1,200 for these batteries. These are each rated at 100 amp hours uh, per, per the uh, discount auto parts, you know, website, battery specs rather. These two are AGM and that's called absorbent glass mat. AGM is the new technology. It's not lead acid. It's like almost like a kind of like a fiberglass matting with acid and stuff like that. But you can see here that, so these, so let me, let me explain this. These two here. Okay. Uh, that's $299, that was like $249. I bought both of them. Uh, that's going to end up going in my truck. But I bought both of them, and then I realized, wow, this is going to get expensive. So I started buying the $109, you know, lead acid RV deep cycles. You can use AGM battery for deep cycle, as what they say online, but it's not really recommended. The difference between a starting battery and a deep cycle battery is a deep cycle you could potentially run all the way down to the bottom to zero and bring it back up. And although that may shorten its lifespan doing that multiple times, it, it will handle it. Whereas a lead acid starting battery in your truck, your common car battery is not meant to do any more than start that vehicle. So you're only using a, you know, eight, 10% of that starting it and that's it. When batteries, you know, are drained, starting batteries are drained down to zero. That causes a big problem for the batteries because they sulfate on the plates in the battery. 
and then it will never hold a charge like it used to. So what happened was I started buying these. They didn't have a lot of them to replace, and I was like, wow, these are going to be hard to find. But all of these are about the same capacity. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to put that one in my truck, get one more of these, and leave this big one because that's rated at 100 amp hours, you see? 100 amp hours. All these are 100 amp hours except that one. I think that one's like, well, that one's 80. See, that one's 80 amp hours there. So what I want to do is I want to make sure I have 100 amp hours for all these. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these four, one, two, three, four. I'm going to run those in parallel. Remember parallel? That's going to do one, two, three, 400 amp hours at 12 volts. Then I'm going to take these, one, two, three, four, 400 amp hours. And then I'm going to take both the banks and run them in series. And I'm going to take 400 amp hours and double my 12 to 24 volts. So now my inverter is going to be 24 volts to 110 volts or 120, whatever you call it. And the reason I'm doing that is because 24 volts to 110 is easier than 12 volts to 110. For 12 volts, you have to have bigger wire here, okay, which is more costly for copper. You know, you want zero gauge or whatever, or, or two gauge for, you know, 12 volt. I could probably get away with four gauge or even two gauge. I'm probably, I'm probably going to go nuts and just buy zero gauge for all this. But the more, you know, 24 volts, half the current to do the same job. That's what you need to know. So I'm going to go to 24 volt battery bank, and that's eight. Now, eventually, I'm going to have probably another four, so I have 12. And a lot of people have said, well, oh, man, I'm only doing this with one battery. Well, I want to run everything. I want to run air conditioners, I want to run all the lights, and I want to do it all day and night. So I'm going to have as many batteries as it takes to run my inverter plugged into the back of the trailer on a several day event. Because maybe the sun's not out, and maybe the sun won't be out, and I can't charge with the solar. But again, the, the, the goal with solar and off-gridding is this. When you have solar panels, those are only intended to charge your battery bank that's powering your, your inverter. You know, these, so this is a 36 volt, these two, 36 volt solar panels by JA Solar. 36 volt, I think it's like 10 amps, something like that. And I bought these off Facebook uh, Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace is the place to get used solar panels for some reason. They're, they're plentiful up there. Let me look on, let me look on here. Okay, this is 36 volt. Let me see if I can get in here. 36 volt, 355 watt, uh, roughly 10 amps, 9.16 amps. Okay, JA Solar. I paid 120 a piece for two 355 watts. So over 700 watts right there. 710 watts in full sunlight. This one is a new power from Amazon. The link is in the description. This is 175 watts. And this is a roughly 10, uh, 10 amp, but it's a 12 volt panel. So these with charge controllers, and I'm going to show you one, for example, in a second. These two are eventually going to be mounted on the trailer, plus probably one more. And then this is going to be mounted on the trailer just for my 12 volt coach batteries. Remember I showed you those on the tongue. With a charge controller, it's going to keep my 12 volt batteries charged. And then these two are going to keep my battery plant charged to run everything in the place okay so 355 355 watts at 710 and then 175 watts at 12 volts and why am i going 36 volt to a 24 volt setup well i'll explain that in the next video but that is so far what i'm starting with and in the next couple of videos you're going to see the difference on what i've researched and learned what i've known for the past on the different types of solar you know monocrystalline polycrystalline thin film amorphous we're going to show you all that that's coming you know, everything is solar here. Look, you got a solar motion detector light. Charges all day, comes on at night, motion detector, but powered by the sun. LED lights, right? Solar panel. See the lights I put up here? These are solar as well. So we have four of the monocrystalline panels here, just to make sure we collect enough sunlight here. And then it charges all day, and at night, when the sun goes down, it turns on. LED, you know? And then when the sun comes up, it turns off. That's the future right here. Why pay for additional electricity or energy when you can harvest it free from the sun? All right, everybody, that kind of wraps it up for part one. Just uh, had to put the first video up there and show you what's coming. I got uh, 
plans on how I'm mounting the solar panels. Plans to show you my neighbor's truck out there. My truck, my diesel, a lot of other stuff. But I want to get the solar thing going and I want to, you know, learn uh, with you guys. I'm sure there'll be some faults that I don't know about or some things that I learn. But um, I'm not the only solar channel out there. But a lot of it is uh, things that I've been researching and trying and playing with. So uh, stay tuned. Thanks for watching on the Ponderosa.